everybody. James Zervios, ANRF Director of Marketing Communications. Very excited to be here today with Dr. Michelle Kalenberg, rheumatologist from the University of Michigan. Michelle, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today with me and talk a little bit about uh, some very exciting news right now. ANRF has officially opened up the 2023-2024 grant cycle. And ANRF is unique in that we fund early career researchers, and you yourself have been a grant recipient uh, for ANRF. But what does that mean when, when we say we fund early career researchers? That's a great question and one that I've gotten already when people have been asking me questions about this grant. Um, what it means is that ANRF is really motivated to help people in the very tricky transition between being a trainee in somebody's lab where you're funded by your PI to developing your own independent line of work and you know getting your own uh, lab and, and, and independent funding. And so our focus is really on late stage postdocs, people that are you know, kind of developing their own uh, research niches and are ready to kind of take it to the next level, uh, as well as early um, assistant professor levels who are kind of in that K to R transition zone. Um, and once you've gotten an R, you're no longer eligible for the ANRF funding because we really want to support the people that are in that tricky transition of trying to uh, establish their own independence. Now, I think everyone knows applying for a grant can be very intimidating and maybe even more so intimidating when you're early on in your career. What are some of the things or some of the tips that you might tell people right now who are considering applying for one of uh, the ANRAF grants? That's a really good question. Um, first, read the instructions. I can't tell you how many people just try to write a grant off of another grant that they saw and the instructions have changed in the meantime. So read them, pay attention to margins, page length, uh, all of the, the nitty gritty. Um, and then secondly, give yourself plenty of time to get your grant put together. And I think, you know, this, this cycle is a little tricky because you've got a lot of holiday time off with your administrative teams. Um, with planning and so meet with your administrative team early, figure out what your deadlines are, make a plan to hit those deadlines and really spend some time developing all of the different aspects of the grant. When you have grants that are serving as sort of a career support award, sometimes the, the pieces about yourself and about the support of your institution are gonna be reviewed as important as the science itself, right? So when we, uh, as a, a scientific advisory board for the ANRF, read these grants, we wanna see that the person is motivated to continue a career in rheumatic disease research. First, first most importantly, we wanna fund people who are aligned with the mission of the ANRF. And two, we wanna make sure that the people are in a good location with good support so that they are not going to be asked to teach, you know, 30 hours a week while they are trying to do their research. Uh, we wanna make sure they're in a supportive environment where there's the training opportunities and the, the core resources and other things to do their science are available. Um, and then, you know, and then obviously the science is, is very important and we wanna make sure that, um, you know, the science is solid and really working towards a good, um, you know, a push towards finding a cure for whatever disease it is that the person is studying. And I think, you know, um, the other piece, which is also important, uh, is the letter from your mentor and your institutional support letter. Um, you know, we want to make sure that this grant wasn't written by the uh, the PI as a way to fund his or her postdoc. Um, this really should be written by the mentee uh, or the junior faculty with the goal of establishing their own research program. You know, you talked a lot in there about the importance of explaining, obviously, the work that the individual is doing. But one key thing that, that I kept uh, kind of hearing you hit on is also the person explaining themselves a little bit, right? And I know mm -hmm. that we've talked about this in the past where ANRF is not just funding the research, but we're also funding the researcher as well. Absolutely. And, and we know, what would you say to somebody right now to kind of help them get into that mindset a little bit so they're not, they, they should be focused on, on explaining their research when they apply, but also to remember themselves as well? 
Exactly. And, you know, really thinking about how you're going to sell yourself in the application, you know, most of the people, well, actually all the people reading your grant aren't going to know you. If they did know you, they'd have to excuse themselves as a conflict of interest. So you have to, you know, explain to people your journey and sort of where you have um, started, what your passions are, why you are doing rheumatic disease research, and how this funding will impact and improve your chances of success at an independent uh, research career. And so, you know, there's there's parts of the application where you get to write that down on paper. And so you want to make sure you spend some time, you know, really making it um, an accurate reflection of your motivation and goals so that people really understand how this award will help you in, in your pursuits. Excellent, excellent. Uh, any final thoughts on someone who might be considering, maybe they're ready to click that button and apply, they're a little bit nervous. Uh, any final thoughts of what you would tell them? Don't, don't be afraid. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? Uh, no, you should, you should. And if you feel like you're not quite ready or you're not... Um, uh, you know, you don't know if you qualify, you can always reach out to info at curearthritis.org. Is that the right email? Yeah. So you can reach out to uh, ANRF and get some uh, advice. Also, you know, uh, ANRF has a list of all the past scholars on their website and feel free to reach out to people who've gotten this award before. Um, one of the beautiful things of the ANRF is they're really trying to build a community of scholars where once you're a part of ANRF, you're always part of ANRF. And so there's lots of people, um, I'm sure some at your own institution even that have gotten this award that you can reach out to um, for advice and to, to bounce ideas off of. Um, yeah. Well, this, this is a very exciting time. In fact, this year, as you know, as a scientific advisory board member, ANRF has increased the grant to 125000 renewable for two years. That's brand new for this year. So very exciting that we were able to do that. And really just great information from you. Dr. Kalenberg, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we really want everyone to apply for these grants and get as many applications as we can. And, and your help and advice has just been wonderful for them. So thank you very much. Thanks, James. I wish everyone out there good luck with your applications. Thank you. Take care.